Yeah, time for some books and boxes and books about boxes on blurbs, greetings and whatnot. So we have this fascinating release right here uh, called The Boxes of Hak Wa Yao. My apologies if pronunciation is wrong. I looked it up. I think that's how it said. I've never actually uh, heard his name pronounced out loud. But um, anyway, I have been a fan of his work for a very long time without even <laughs> knowing that I was in a way. It was first uh, an article by Phil Salvador that uh, talked about these. I mean, he's done so much cool work. I just read pretty much everything he puts out. But uh, yeah, I did specifically an article about these funky shaped big boxes of which I've collected these here from this guy and his design studio, I guess, more, more particularly. Uh, but yeah, they also started selling this uh, limited edition, I think just self-published book going over the packaging of the, the studio there, which is uh, in the Bay Area. Yeah, he worked at the design office of Wong and Yao with Valerie Wong. Reimagine the core assumptions of video game or yeah, video game packaging by materializing the essence of a game in unexpected 3D forms. And I, I love this quote right here from uh, him talking about the designs. When a customer saw our design in the store, we didn't want them to ask, is this right for me? We wanted them to ask, what the hell is this? <laughs> Which, uh, that's just why I've ended up collecting so many oddly shaped computer game boxes over the years. And I, like I guess I didn't even know that I was a... Uh, a fan of this guy's work and i guess his design team or whoever worked there i haven't actually uh, read all of this yet most of this though is just pictures it's like a kind of a coffee table art book but um really really fascinating stuff and expands on or really kind of builds on the uh article by mr salvador uh link to this book as well as the article in the video description i don't know if there's still any copies of this available for sale it was uh a limited thingy but yeah it just kind of goes through chronological order of all of their uh, different box designs from 1988 to 1997 starting with this one right here jet fighter the adventure which is this delightful thing here and yeah it's got vaguely normal box shape <laughs> to it but then it's got this slant on the top and then you turn it over and it's got this going on like, what in the heck? It's not nearly as bonkers as some of the other boxes on this table, but uh, I, I was just, man, whenever I saw this, however many years ago, I'm like, I gotta get a copy of this. <laughs> Plus, it's just a neat flight sim. I love those filled-in 3D polygonal shapes, no textures. Yeah. And, you know, uh, yeah, compared to the others, it's really not that odd. A lot of the complaints, though, from retailers back in the day, though, is that so many of these were just bizarre to put on shelves, didn't know where to put them. They didn't really stack properly. I'm having that problem here. I'm kind of having to sort of stack them against each other and they don't line up exactly, but so it goes. I also did some packaging for some other things here, something called Flying Colors. I believe this is a piece of software by Magic Mouse Productions, 1993. It's interesting, this jump from Jet Fighter to this one called Flying Colors. I don't have a copy of this one, uh, but this one's like an origami thing and it sort of rotates in the middle, I think. I do wish there were some more pictures of some of the transformations of these, because some of these do transform. Uh, but yeah, also did lots of different uh, promotional designs, manual designs, inserts, things like that. This book is just full of those kind of deals. This one's neat though, Supreme Warrior. Yeah, it's just a weird... Ooh, something's going on with my box here. Yeah, just a weird shaped box within a plastic packaging. Yeah, see, the, the CD is like poking out the side here because it can't go down. That's the bottom. It just sort of has to rest there. So it's been poking out the side there, pushing the box apart. Anyway, so that's really the box right there. It's just in a, a plastic packaging to keep it together. Also reminds me of the packaging for Bethesda's game X-Car back in the day, which I have that as well. It's a very similar like plastic sleeve, weird shaped box design, but uh, it's not by the design studio here. It was an imitation. And I have a lot more weirdly shaped boxes. They're all imitations over there, probably another dozen or so 
that look like they would come from uh, Mr. Yao, but not. I don't know. I think some of that is actually talked about in the book. Just all the imitators and people trying to pull off a similar weird vibe. Yeah, here's another one. Some of the um, promotional packaging for Jet Fighter 2. This was just a promotional sleeve, though. We'll get to the actual game here in a bit. Yeah, this one's fascinating. Uh, Havoc in the infamous egg carton box. Yeah, this is a relatively recent addition. I'd never found or never even seen a copy available for sale. Uh, this one is still sealed, but yeah, it's supposed to have this sort of, uh, you know, fully recyclable, but also post-apocalyptic concrete type look. What a great box and also a complete nightmare at retail, I can imagine. I mean, man, it's, it's just such an odd way to do everything. Super cool, though. And uh, yes, the only copy I've ever seen show up available for sale. Thanks to, again, Phil Savador for tweeting it out, <laughs> letting me know it existed. Ah, here we go. Next one up, 1991. We got good old Spectre. I'm really fond of this game, uh, especially on the Mac. But yeah, the box as well. Got a sealed copy here. Got a little bit of glue from stickers or something used to be on there, but yeah, just straight up Spectre. This is supposed to mimic one of the designs of the ships in the game. And it very much does. Again, very um, polygonal, <laughs> weird kind of stuff. Hello there. It does a great job of just getting across sort of the idea of the game, the feel of the game, the essence of it. That was the whole idea of these boxes. Spectre boxes and their wedge shapes are quite memorable. There's another one right here. I've actually never seen this one until this book. This is uh, the best Spectre. I guess a re-release. Spectre Shelf Talker. Okay, no, no, that's just a thing you'd set up in retail to promote it. Fascinating. Yeah, they also designed the user reference manual, which is inside the box. I mean, even the manuals had to be bizarrely shaped. How cool is that? Uh, same for Jet Fighter 2 and Spectre here. So just sort of a promotional packaging thing once again. Almost origami going on. This uh, Wolf Pack is a game I have never come across, or at least not in this box. I have a loose copy, but yeah. Um, design firm started doing a lot of work for Nova Logic. A good number of these are Nova Logic military sims. I've never come across Wolf Pack, though. Comanche, though. Good old Maximum Overkill. The first one from 1992. I do have that. A bit of a personal favorite. Just love helicopter games in general, but this box, I mean, look at that. Again, it kind of uh, mimics or gets across some of the idea of the, the glass cockpit and it opens up like that. How neat. <laughs> box has been a bit worn down over the years, but uh, yeah, there's like this cardboard insert bit that folds up and goes in place in there. And, uh, and I got all the game stuff inside there, but yeah, that's pretty much how that works. It's just a neat folding design. Lovely. I very much remember seeing this on store shelves and being like, wow, that looks so much cooler than LHX. <laughs> 386 with four megs of RAM or greater recommended. No, required. Ah, Comanche Over the Edge also did the box design for that. But that one's in a very standard, just normal box. I have a, a, I mean, I have that one too, but I don't have it out really here because it's just a box. It's just got that design language. There's not a lot going on at all that's interesting. Even the manuals are normally shaped boring. And another version of Wolfpack here. Slightly different box, just sort of an inset cut out there instead of an angle on the front. Uh, they definitely tried to put some of these releases, you know, make them odd, but uh, a little more flat for the shelf space later on. Here's a good one that kind of follows those rules. The classic Prince of Persia 1989 for the Mac and PC. It's the Mac version they're showing here, but uh, yeah, also recently picked this one up. This one took me a very long time to find. And uh, yeah, this version's in great shape for this particular unit. Yeah, version for IBM PC. 
it, I, I was seriously, I've had like a, a saved search for <laughs> over a decade or whatever. I just love this box. Jordan Mechner very much credits this particular box design for helping sell the game because it originally had this very bland looking, just red Bruderbund style box. Didn't stand out at all. Uh, if it was just up against a bunch of other things stacked on a retail shelf. But anyway, and then they had this and all of a sudden the game starts selling. Uh, yeah, makes a lot of sense. Reminds me a lot of the uh, Supreme Warrior inner part of the box. But instead of having the plastic outside, I got this base that it sits on, slots into. <laughs> uh, same thing for Prince of Persia 2, which I think is the next one. Yeah, Shadow and Flame. Pretty much the same design, just upside down. And I got this one here, still sealed. Is this for the Mac? Yeah, it's the Mac version. So, yeah, exact same thing. They just, they flipped it around. <laughs> I don't know how much of this was redesigned specifically for this, or if they literally just said, hey, we've already got the cardboard. Let's just print something else on it. I think that's what they did, because it's the same, right? So, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's still credited to him because it is his design, but anyway, yeah, a good way to rework what you already got, save a few dollars while still spending a few dollars on some funky packaging. Let's see here. Ah, yes, Gabriel Knight, wonderful Sierra point and click adventure game and one of my absolute favorite boxes. It always kind of looks larger in photos than it actually is. And I remember when I first got this, however many years ago, I was surprised at how relatively small the box is. I mean, it's, you know, it's not very big. It's just got such a funky, wild shape. I really, really like it. Mine was in very bad condition when I got it, but that's, <laughs> that's how I got it. It was cheap, um, it's just sort of taped together, but yeah. Another one that comes apart like that and packs everything inside there. Funk. Satisfying box. Seriously, every single time somebody comes over to look at my collection, this is one of the first they pick out. Let's see here. Ah, Iron Helix. Here's another one. I wish there were more pictures of it because, uh, you know, pictures in the book, you can find them online. The cover of that slides off and shows this really cool extra set of artwork underneath the top sleeve. Uh, circuit boards and other weird stuff, if I recall. It's not one that I, that I own, but I always thought it looked cool. It's another one that I, I just, I've never even heard of this game. Typhoon Thompson? <laughs> Search for the Sea Child? Yeah, kind of like the Comanche expansion. It's just a normal box with a cool design, you know, cool uh, graphics on it. Oh, here we go. Ultra Bots. Yeah, this one is so neat. So it is a mech game and the box transforms along with it. So yeah, <laughs> so look at this. What a ballsy design for packaging. So it looks pretty normal, but then you can do this. <laughs> and then you can dunk, do that. And it's kind of like, kind of like the feet of a mech in a way. Ah, it's so cool. It's so cool. One of my favorite boxes. I've actually had, this is my second one. I had another one and it got completely like crushed during a move. I was so sad. Um, it wasn't in the best condition originally anyway, but the fact that it got like smashed under another box, anyway, it pissed me off. And then this one, well, I got it again and uh, looks much better. I'm gonna take much better care of this one. And the discs and manuals and everything comes out here. <laughs> yeah, one of my absolute favorite boxes of all time. It's truly fascinating. There's also a similar-ish one for The Incredible Machine, or maybe it was the even more Incredible Machine, I don't remember. Which I always thought was by the same designer, Mr. Yo here, but apparently not. Apparently that was sort of a ripoff by Sierra Dynamics, which that sucks. Um, anyway. Electronic Arts and Ultralogic, Ultralogic, Nova Logic. <laughs> had this one, and this is this is an official design of his. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, Spectre Supreme. One that I have never run across. I kind of like how this one looks more like a Star Trek com badge. 
<laughs> it's got this copper color to it. I would love to find that one. I've never played Spectre Supreme. Uh, I've got Spectre and Spectre VR. Those are the ones that I'm most familiar with. But this is like an expanded version of the original Spectre. Really cool manual too. Look at that. Again, with the origami type of thing going on. So cool. Lovely, lovely design. Here we go. Spectre VR. This is a different version. Enhanced CD-ROM edition. I don't have this. It's more red. The one I have is just the original Spectre VR, I think. Hmm. I don't know, even the, like the slats on the top are different. So which version do I have? I know it's for the Mac, but two users, two users land pack. I, I think, I thought this is just the original Spectre VR. Now I'm kind of wondering, because those are just like stickers placed on top of the design anyway it's pretty great again mimicking the ship design but it's got the extra yep, down there <laughs> lovely lovely packaging always been one of my favorites that one i kind of like it even more than the uh, original specter kind of the the original specter has that cool shape on top and everything so double switch another one that i do not have uh, it's kind of a simple box it's actually pretty similar to armored fist but it's got a hole here like a little keyhole interesting just never come across that for pc uh yeah he also did some uh, nintendo stuff promotional material and different game packaging right on bungling bay apparently load runner classics yeah, here we go armored fist Novologic Tank Sim. Always really enjoyed this one too. In fact, I've showed a, no a number of these on a weird packaging. Oh, a packaging about weird. Oh, dang it. A video about weird packaging that I did on LGR years ago. I think I showed this one in that one. But yeah, it's sort of mimicking a tank. You get tank treads here. You can see the, the wheels there and the tread. Ah, it's just great. And I got a little opening there showing... Uh, a screenshot. I think this is uh, using the same engine as Comanche. It's all voxels and 3D coolness. Oh, yeah, voxel space, patent pending. Mm -hmm. And it opens up where it looks like it opens up, but it all kind of packs in there weirdly and gets bent up so I don't open this very often at all. Yeah, again, great box. Every single one of these are great. Aha. And here's the last one that I have currently anyway. This is Jet Fighter 2 Advanced Tactical Fighter from 1990. Does this actually go in? This is sort of not really chronological order, is it? Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, anyway. Check that out. Yeah, it's like an expanded idea of what's going on with the Comanche one with that whole big thing in the middle there. So it opens up once again, kind of like a jet cockpit. <laughs> uh, really, really neat. I don't, I don't think the, uh... yeah, this is packed all the way back here. No, none of this is weirdly shaped or anything. Yeah. The stripey design very much stands out when it's just on a shelf. Dude, super cool. And yeah, the rest of this is uh, well, kind of more standard design boxes, quarterback attack. I think the only kind of thing that's really weird about that one is a lot of the artwork is on the quote unquote back of the box you can see here. That's slightly odd. FX force, force feedback joystick packaging. Tone rebellion, this is sort of a concept box you know it's it's fine but it, the crazy designs are what really attract me to it not necessarily the uh, the graphic design or the artwork i mean some of the artwork's pretty cool too but yeah like all the digital pictures releases uh, corpse killer and slime city with scotty pippen and so on I, I don't have any of these not for pc anyway and uh yeah the rest of this um just goes over some sketches design ideas and actually this one right here the sphere 360 game controller which i have covered a version of it i do have a, a packaging for that but i believe it's the ps1 version not the pc 
Anyway, I, I, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've had that out. It is somewhere in storage. But yeah, just a, a bunch of concept art and ideas and sketches and things uh, in the rest of the book, which is pretty great. They even have their uh, identifying stationery for the design studio. Anyway, that's it. A uh, fantastic release of <laughs> something that is hugely down my alley in terms of a coffee table book. I will cherish this, especially since there weren't a whole ton of them printed. Uh, last I checked, anyway. I don't know. Maybe that'll change. But yeah, some of my favorite things to collect here. Hope you all enjoyed watching this blurb.